Flames of War brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to the hub on beastsofwar.com to find news, tactics and tutorials about the game. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com. Welcome again to another airbrush tutorial with Brian and myself. Um, we're going to be going over some more stencils. Yep. Uh, what have we got this time? Because I see some uh, jet bikes here. Yep. Um, in uh, wave one of the HS stencils, we did the uh, the hex grids and the uh, uh, dragon scales grid. Mm -hmm. um, they were very popular, and we kept on having people ask us to do um, some diamond grids as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done some of those. So we've got one here. There's three different sizes, if we can see the three. And are these like uh, are these the first wave or are these? Uh, these, are the, these are the new ones, these are yeah. wave two. So these are coming out soon in the, in the Kickstarter. Um, so this is a diamond check. Mm -hmm. And there's three different sizes of, uh, of diamond, diamond grid. grid here as well. Cool. So we're using those. Mm -hmm. So, and we have three models here that we're gonna be working on, is it, or? Yep, yeah, um, we're gonna use uh, one of them is just to show the bigger sizes, mm -hmm. um, and then the other two will show the, the different types of grid. All right, cool. So what is our first step here then? What colors have you chosen for these? Uh, I've got two colors. I'm going to do one red, one of them red and two of them blue. Okay. Um, so I'll do one of each of these two, and then decide what to do the big one for as well. All right, cool. All right, well, I will hand it over to you. Yep. So to start with, I'm just going to pick out all the, the raised areas, um, and then we'll, the, the more coats we put on, the brighter it will get. Yeah. for that one. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll do the big one in the same color. Yep. Do the same thing. So again, it's a, an even-ish base coat. But yeah, I'm, I'm just trying shape. to leave some of the, especially in like areas here where you've got this really deep crease running down here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try not to aim the paint in there. I'll aim the paint along this, along this piece here and along here, and, and leave that gap. And the overspray will get in there and do it for you. So. Yep. Um, it just makes it look a bit more 3D and saves you having to shade it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you can see I'm just shooting through the middle, mm -hmm. but you can see that the overspray is wrapping around. Yeah. And it gives it that sort of 3D effect. Yeah, it's, it's emphasizing the shading mm. more, emphasizing yeah. the shape. Something here, I'm picking out this middle area mm -hmm. and not wrapping it around too far. All right, I think that will do mm -hmm. for that stage. So we're gonna do the same thing now with the red for the other jet bike. Mm -hmm. You can see on the tin here, it's a very, it is actually a very bright red. Mm -hmm. but because we have a black base coat uh, and the transparency of airbrush paints, you, you know you have to build up a lot more mm -hmm. if you go for a dark base coat. Stage. Mm -hmm. So I'll let that dry for a minute. Uh, we're next going to do the, uh, the highlights on the blue. All right. So I'm just going to add a lighter colour um, to what we've already got in the airbrush. Mm -hmm. um, although we have got quite a lot of paint in there. So I'm going to tip some out. Okay. So at this point, what blue were we using? We were using. Um, um, we were the, using. Imperial blue. Yeah, yeah, Imperial blue mm -hmm. with a little bit of the. Electric blue. Mm -hmm. And at this bit, well, at this stage, then we will we'll just we add, add more, more electric blue. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to tip out what's in there. Mm -hmm. It's a bit too much. And add some electric blue. Now, with thinning airbrush paints, like 
uh, the model and game air range are sort of thinner paints anyway. Um, you do need to thin them. That's yep. a common mistake as people think because it's an airbrush paint and you chuck it straight in. Mm -hmm. You do need to thin it. Um, and uh, depending on how transparent you want the paint and, and how thinly you want to spray it on is how much you need to thin it. Mm -hmm. um, it is a bit of trial and error, um, but you do need to thin it. Yeah. And particularly with um, very uh, opaque colors, um, such as the the, de the, uh, the dead white here, if I can show you that, that mm -hmm. one. Um, I recommend using some of the uh, the flow improver, the, the, uh, the Vallejo flow improver. That helps a great deal with thinning those paints that are really strong and got a lot of pigment in them. Yeah. So I'm just going to aim through the middle part here. This is going to be a highlight and to pick out, again, to pick out the edges mm -hmm. um, and try and leave the darker areas a bit. So this is the pelt I've just shot there. Mm -hmm. You can see it's a bit lighter than the rest. Is that do for now? Yeah, that's pretty good. And same with the big one. Mm -hmm. That the, the lighter blue does make a heck of a lot of difference. It just, it just makes it a lot more interesting. You really accentuate the curves of the vehicle and yeah. you know, it makes it stand out a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right, so we do the same thing now with the red. Yeah. So we'll add some uh, lighter colours mm -hmm. and, uh, and before the same thing. we were using the Game Air Scarlet Red, which yep. is that one. Yep. And then you're adding I believe, is it this one you're adding? Yeah, we're gonna add some bloody red, and I think I might even put a bit of the uh, golden yellow, mm -hmm. that one, in as well. Okay, so how much of this, when you're doing the highlighting, how much of this is down to just practice with the airbrush, and how much is, when you look at the model, you know where the highlights have to be? Um, or is that an awkward question? <laughs> it's, uh, you, you need to have the trigger control. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you're in as close as I was, and you open the trigger up fully, it's just going to puddle and run all over the model. Mm -hmm. um, so I can hear, I'll do it on top of this cam, you can see I can do a you know, do a little pass of red quite happily. I'm barely moving the trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably only moving the trigger, you know, this sort of amount. If I'm in really close and do it and pull the trigger back fully, you can see it just, it just puddles and runs everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you need to practice that, how far you move the trigger, how close you need to be to get the line you want. Yep. Um, then also, you look at the model and see where you think the height should be, mm -hmm. um, accentuate the curves that are there if it's something like this. Um, but even on quite an angular thing, um, you can just aim dead on the point of the angle mm -hmm. and pick out that quite yeah. nicely as well. Yeah. Um, you, you can mask a lot of things off, but it's amazing how far you can get without masking. Mm -hmm. So we do the same thing here, mm -hmm. just lighten up the, uh, the curves and the, the, the uh, leading edges. Yeah. So there is a difference, it's, it's quite subtle at the moment, mm -hmm. so I might add a bit more yellow. I suppose this is also the, the joy of it, when you do a little bit you can see where the tone is. Yeah, well that's why I do it. just a little bit to start with, is, um, uh, and also why you, you, you don't just instantly go for a really bright highlight, mm -hmm. um, you want to sort of build to it and it's just easier to do it if you do it in stages. really wet quite here, it's very shiny, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to dry it with the air so it mats off and then I can carry on. At this stage you can even pick out these, um, the uh, raised bits here, the round bits. Right, I think 
Yeah, it will do. That's looking good. So this is the point now where we have to break. And we yeah, have to you've got to be patient with it now. Um, yeah. You could try going straight on the stencil, but the chances are you might damage the paint you've mm -hmm. already put on. So let it thoroughly dry and then get a good coat of varnish on there. Yep, so when we come back, we'll get into the stenciling. We'll have had the, the varnish down and we'll talk maybe a little bit about varnishes again because yep. we've been mentioning it before. So we'll come right back. Cheers, guys. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the reconquest and fight the scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. So welcome back to part two uh, of our little jet bikes. We're now ready to apply the stencils. So yep. what stencil are we using? Uh, we're going to use the... Uh... Diamond check one, this mm -hmm. is the smallest one. Uh, I'm gonna pick out some areas. They're a bit different to some of the other videos. Uh, I'm gonna just put one color on mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully that will come out um, okay as it is. All right, cool. Um, so in the, at the moment, we've got a mix of these three colors. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, a little bit of golden yellow and about, uh, and quite a bit of moon yellow and bone white. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, we've got the bone white in there to help it uh, bite onto the red. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the yellows on their own wouldn't really do it. Yeah. So uh, let's see how it goes. You want to try and get all the diamonds lining up. If you mm -hmm. start having all different angles, it's going to look a bit weird. Yeah. But it, even with the bone white in there, you're still going to have to layer it on a few more times than than the other than just pure white. Yeah. Um, so you have to be patient and be careful not to move the stencil. Mm -hmm. There we go. And you're still getting, because you're using the airbrush, you're getting that fade. Yeah, I, I like to have them fade out. If you don't want them to fade out, what you would do is you would mask off the area you're not using of the stencil mm -hmm. and just really concentrate on the whole area evenly. Yeah. Um, but I like having them fade out. Uh, yeah. I think it looks cool. Yeah, it does. What you can also do when you're using a coloured paint rather than the white we were using earlier. You can see here where we were using earlier. Mm -hmm. If you, while you're painting the actual model, you can compare the stencil to the painted stencil and you can see how much paint you put on to try and keep it even. Yeah, so you notice your consistency a lot more easily. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a couple of passes there. You can see it's a lot, it's a lot yeah. brighter and more paint here. Mm -hmm. So if you do them till they're about the same, should hopefully be even. Yeah, they're about the same now. So as we can see, that both sides are oh, about the same sort yeah. of intensity. And the fade is almost identical as well. Yeah. yeah. But then that's that's more down to knowing where you're focusing more on. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, the good th you can see through the stencil, um, so that helps with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing, just trying to remember what you did before and trying to copy that on the other side. It can be tricky making it even. Um, if necessary, if you did do it slightly wrong, you could easily come back in with a darker red mm -hmm. and then a light red to, to match it up. Yeah. See, that side's very wet, so I'm going to dry it with the air before I put the other side on. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that should be it. Mm -hmm. So you can see one side's a bit further down than the other. Mm -hmm. So a little trick that you can do, if you're quick, is you get a little bit of airbrush cleaner. And you can, because we've varnished this, mm -hmm. we can wipe off the s scales that are further down. Yeah. And even it up. But you have to be careful not to wipe off too much and to try and make it even. Yep, that's pretty good to me. There we go. So that's that one. Mm -hmm. And we've got some of the, the blue ones to do as well. Mm -hmm. These two. So I'm going to do a similar sort of thing uh, with this one, um, but with the uh, with a light blue. Mm -hmm. So in here we've got a mix of uh, electric blue and 
Right. And we're doing the same thing. Same sort of thing. Uh, I might try and do it slightly differently on this one. No, that's cool. I like that. So it gives a bit of a different effect than yeah. the with, with the transparency over the top. It's it's an even colour, but you still can get a bit of a fade. Um, but it is a bit easier getting a, a very light colour to go over. So that's why we've done that. Yeah. There we go. I think I'll leave that one like that. Yep, that is very cool. So that's why we call them, call them uh, high speed stencils. <laughs> it's uh, it's very quick to get a cool effect. Mm -hmm. And what about our our larger one then? Uh, I was going to do the um, the same sort of way, but use the transparent paints, the inks, mm -hmm. to to tint it. All right. Um, so I'm going to add a bit more white to the pale blue we've already got. Now you're using very little uh, of the thinner as well. Yeah, you don't need, you don't need an awful lot. If you put too much in, it makes it very transparent, yeah. which can be a good thing, but not for this. You, mm -hmm. you really want to get the stenciling part done in one go yeah. uh, and, and quick as possible so you don't move it while you're working. Mm -hmm. So on this one, I'm actually going to use the diamond grid. Again, you want to get it, get the model, the, the stencil on the model as flat as possible. Mm -hmm. If you can see it's not flat somewhere, just don't don't spray that part. Say it's tricky to get it on camera and just paint at the same time. Yeah. Excellent. That's quite even. Yep. And then I'm going to use the same stencil, but a smaller version, uh, to pick out some of the other areas. Mm -hmm. And what, what are you calling the smallest ones? The, the uh, micro we're calling these micro ones. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is a small, and uh, no, this is a small, and then that's the mini. Those come as a set, mm -hmm. and then the micro one comes on its own. And this last bit on the top, I think. I think I might pick out these raised yeah. engine parts here as well. It does. It, you're immediately showing as well how much the different grid sizes change the dynamic of the shape of the, of yeah. the vehicle in this case as well. Yeah. You're getting more interest as you add. Yeah, that's what, that's why I like to sometimes use them in combination. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, as you say, adds a bit more interest. It does show how immediately more vibrant the model becomes and more like visually interesting, of course. Yep, we're going to make it a bit more interesting because mm -hmm. we're going to use the transparent paint as well. Oh, so we're going to throw some inks on it yep. now too? So here we have the, uh, we're going to use the game ink, mm -hmm. uh, blue and violet. violet yeah. Put the blue in there first. Uh, I haven't thinned these down. Mm -hmm. You could thin them if you want and you'll get a more subtle colour change. Um, and here I'm going to use these to aim in from the back mm -hmm. and fade to the front. As I said before, I like to have a fade on there, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So sort of bringing it in as a curve round mm -hmm. here, yeah. kind of accentuates the front a bit. And this piece here, mainly aiming at the side here. Mm -hmm. I mean, directly in this crease here, and the overspray is what's tinting the side of the mm -hmm. engine part. There we go. And then we're going to chuck some purple on there as well. Mm -hmm. It'll make it pop even more. So where are you going to aim the purple? Uh, mainly at the back. So if I was doing it down here, I brought the blue up mm -hmm. to here. But, but I was aiming down here, and mm -hmm. it's the overspray that's gone to there. With the purple, it's going to be mainly just down here. Mm -hmm. So it's just to tint the, the rear of the blue. 
And all I'm going to do is chuck it. There's a tiny bit of blue left. I'm just going to chuck the purple in there, and that'll be fine. It just gives it a bit more depth. Yeah. So as you can see, you know, very quick, mm -hmm. um, and it looks great. You know, do you even need any age highlights? No. You know, you I, can, I, you can, but you can, but you've you've put so much into the the stenciling and the highlighting with the stenciling. I, I don't even need them. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you do want to get an army done quickly, mm -hmm. I think just leave it at that. Do Absolutely. a couple of gemstones. Put the rest of the ship on. <laughs> this is just part of it. But yeah. Now oh, there, that is looking really good. But that shows how quick you can do something like that with the stencils. Yeah. And how little other ancillary painting, I guess, you would need on top of that. So we have our three awesome little sort of Harlequin esque Eldar awesomes. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say anymore. Seriously. No. So guys, if you want to know more. Uh, go over to Anarchy Models and check out the stencils there. Obviously, we have the other videos here on Beast of War uh, with uh, Brian showing off all uh, the amazing stuff that he's doing. So, guys, thank you very much. Put your comments down below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on BeastOfWar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com.